Matt, sometimes we're hipsters in certain regards, and we'll go way off the board and pick Fight of the Night contenders. We'll pick, like, the second one on the card that's a flyweight matchup. This weekend, there are some contenders, but your co-main event is clearing away your Fight of the Night between the Hurricane Shane Burgos and Josh Emmett, nicknamed to be determined. And this is such a good fight because Josh Emmett has dynamite in his hands, but you might not see it. And it might take him a little bit of time to get warmed up. Or he just comes flying out of the gates. Like his last fight against Mursad Bektik. So you got a crazy fight against Mursad Bektik. He had a wild fight before that against Michael Johnson. Where he lost every single minute of that fight before he got the knockout. And that was in the later stages of the fight. And then before that, a really tough loss to Jeremy Stevens. It could be telling in this matchup. And we'll get into that one a little bit later on. The odds are very close. They're almost pick them odds. Shane Burgos slightly favored. Over on Tapology, a slight majority, 54% out of 824 votes going with Burgos. Uh, 47% predicting a knockout, 47% predicting a decision. The other 3%, or 6%, I guess, are absolute wild cards picking Shane Burgos to win by submission. That's not going to happen. That's that, that I'm 99% That's true. We're going with we percentages. That one's not going to happen. I know you're so excited about this fight because Shane Burgos, for what it's worth, has some of the best footwork and some of the best boxing in not just the featherweight division, which is awesome. Not just the UFC, which is really kicking some butt. In all of MMA, oh, what do you make of this matchup? I know you're really excited about oh, this. Oh, yeah, one. we've been talking about this one since way before we started doing these videos. I'm more excited for this fight than I am for the main event. I'll let that be known right now, just because I'm pretty sure I know what's going to happen in the main event. And this fight could go so many different ways, because although we don't see it, Josh Emmett is a phenomenal wrestler, and it's always something in his back pocket that he can go to if he really has to. And I don't know if he's going to use it or not, but if he just decides, okay, I'm going to try to Khabib uh, Shane Burgos this fight, I think he could do it. The thing is, though, he's such a powerful guy on the feet that he's probably never going to go for a takedown, at least not in this fight, because he's always got that puncher's chance no matter what. The problem is, I think he has a, not even a slight, I think he has a good power advantage over Shane Burgos in this fight, but I think the speed advantage that Burgos has over Emmett in this fight is astronomical. I think it's going to make such a big difference, and especially in the way that they fight. Josh Emmett is very, hold my hands high, throw a few shots, and then if I land the big one, I land the big one. If not, kind of reset, do it again. Shane Burgos is going to go to your body, go to your head, throw a like it, go to your body, go to your head, rinse, repeat. I throw all these different boxing combinations, and give a lot of looks to you. And the thing is, when Shane Burgos has those nice boxing combinations, he has to be really in close. The problem is, when you're really in close to Josh Emmett, he can throw one of those big bombs that can knock you out. So I think this really caters to a fight of the night. I think if Emmett drops him, it could just kind of turn into this big brawl. And I think that could be a really fun fight for the fans. Here's a key factor, and we're talking so much about the boxing. Of course, Josh Emmett with the background of wrestling all through his way up on the California regional scene. He said, if I lose... Probably just going to give up anyway, and he didn't, and he made it in the UFC, and he's carved out a great career. And you might think, well, hey, geez, how old are these guys? Well, at the night of the fight, Shane Burgos is going to be 29 years old, Josh Emmett a tick over 35, which is crazy to think of. An older guy, not necessarily in the later part of his career, at the top of the featherweight division or close to it, oh, yeah. and these guys stylistically match up so well. The question I have for you, and it could become a key factor, and it has in the last two or three years and not just, you know, boxers careers in MMA, you know, the, the, the MMA boxer, if you will, but the leg kicks, you see it with the Jose Aldo's or the Jeremy Stevens out of these two guys, who has the better leg kicks? Neither. That's kind of the weird thing. Neither guy has a very <laughs> kick heavy attack. Now Shane Burgos will use the kick a little bit more than Josh Emma, but again, like one time zero is still zero. So it, it, I don't really think it's going to play that much of a factor. I think Shane Burgos's style at least caters to a more kick heavy attack. He really has to go to it. But again, we're and this is the only problem that I have with Shane Burgos moving forward in that division. Since we are talking about kicks, every guy in that division throws insane kicks, other than him for the most part. Max or Holloway, Calvin Cater. Calvin Cater, okay, you got me there. But Max Holloway, he's pretty good at kicking. Uh, Gaier Rodriguez, I don't know if you've ever seen him fight, but he knows how to kick. Zabit can kick. Korean Zombie can kick. And they're all guys who can change it up from legs, body, and head, too. So I think that's something that both guys, no matter who the winner is, is going to have to kind of add into their game at some point. I think Shane Burgos is going to be able to get the win. I'm not going to predict a finish just because Josh Emmett has shown how tough he is. Yes, Shane, or Jeremy Stevens is able to knock him out, but Jeremy Stevens hit him with like five of the hardest punches I've ever seen ever. And then a bunch of crazy elbows on the ground. So After the fight guys, was over? Maybe. Listen, it already happened. He got hit a lot. And he was out for a long time. And I think that's something that it does have to be brought into this. Because 
although Josh Abbott is kind of young in his MMA career, at least where he hasn't taken, you know, this whole body of sustained damage, in that one fight, he took more damage than some fighters do throughout their whole entire career. I mean, if you read some of the injuries that he went through, his sinuses had collapsed, he had a broken orbital, a broken nose. Like, these are serious long-term injuries that never really go away. And it's always going to be something in the back of your mind, too. Now, I'm not going to say that, you know, if Shane Burgos starts to land, Josh Evans going to, you know, it's going to bring him back to that. He's going to panic because Josh Evans is professional. But it's something that those things, once they break, it happens easier the next time and the next time and the next time. Now, you okay, here's a great example. You almost had a career-ending hockey injury and were tempted into going into dance for the longest time because the doctor had told you that the arm could be broken again quite easily. So I, this is your fight of the night, hands down. It can end so many different ways. Official prediction, though, I'm going to say Shane Burgos by TKO third round, mainly due to the body work. He's a guy who isn't afraid to go to the body and then work his way up to the head. He's really good at breaking his opponents down from legs, body, and then head. And I think he'll end up landing a big shot by the end of it. Who's somebody that Josh Emmett has fought somewhat recently that kind of follows that game plan, but then there's always a hole in his game and it's to his detriment? Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson, that fight did great. And his body shots are good. And his left hand's amazing. Shane Burgos, the combination of footwork and striking and accuracy, I think that's going to be the telling factor in this one. Now, could Josh Emmett, of course, land that one knockout punch? Like, that's a conversation you normally have at heavyweight, not a featherweight. But, yes, he could. Josh Emmett very well could. And again, if you're your stat guy, if you're a stat guy, here's a stat for you. Shane Burgos, takedown accuracy, 100% takedown defense, 90% in the UFC. That means absolutely nothing. But the telling sign here is the fact that Josh Emmett, for what it's worth, strikes landed per minute, strikes absorbed per minute, just a tick above the, the 1%. Uh, you look at it in terms of Shane Burgos, 7.09 to 5.34, and I might as well give it for Emmett, 3.63 to 3.26. So for Josh Emmett, it's give one, take one. For Shane Burgos, it's just crazy volume, and if I take some, I take some. But really, I've been coming out on the positive end of things. Now, Matt, yes, that hockey injury could have ruined my career, but it hasn't ruined my Fight Night Picks career. I'm way above you. Make sure you check that out in the description. I'm with my prediction. <laughs> Which... the opposite of me. We spent a lot of time on this fight. Normally, we cap it at two minutes, but forget about that for this card because this fight is amazing. But if you can offer up a final prediction, who's going to win the fight and how is it going to go down? You already gave us a sneak preview, but what do you see in this one? So it's either going to end by a first-round knockout by Josh Emmett. It's going to end because uh, Shane Berger is going to constantly rush forward, rush forward, rush forward, and then eventually just land into a big shot. I think that's a very realistic possibility. I think the more likely possibility though and the more likely outcome of this fight is Schamberger is going to go to the body early really test that cardio of, Shane, of uh, Josh Emmett because we haven't really seen Josh Emmett go into the later rounds Desmond Green was able to extend him and win a decision against him uh, some guys have had success at least later on in fights against him because he is such a big explosive guy if you can get him to work those first couple of rounds yes he carries his power late but the speed that his shots are coming at if you're a guy like Burgos who has pretty good head movement you're going to be able to read those shots quite a bit better as the fight goes on and I think that eventually he's going to be able to land, you know, at one of those boxing combos of his and be able to put Josh Emmett down in the way. So I'm going to say Shane Burgos by a late TKO, but more likely probably Shane Burgos by decision. The weird thing about stats, and again, this is another one that you really have to look into. We talked about it with Clay Guida. He throws things just for fun almost. Like his career average, and he's had such a long UFC career, so you can really dive into those numbers, is 33%. So one out of every three strikes lands. With Josh Emmett, his striking accuracy is only 36% versus what he gives and what he takes. That's not good. That's bad. That's that's bad. For, for Shane Burgos, it's a good positive percentage plus the striking accuracy at 50%. And you look at the defense, yeah, it's a little bit better for Josh Emmett. But regardless, you're going to have that volume, that constant pressure, the great footwork versus Josh Emmett that might plant and throw and continue to move forward. Shane Burgos moving target, tougher to hit. I think it gives a, a better opportunity in this fight. I'm going to agree with you and go with Shane Burgos. Matt, fight of the night contender for sure. Oh, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't end in the first 30 seconds. Smaller cage, who knows, but we're really looking forward to the rest of the card. An extended look in our next video, Alexander Volkov, Curtis Blades. You're not going to want to miss that. Keep it locked in with Fight Name Picks, Matt, as we always say. Let's, let's get, get into it. it.